Okay, love. Science! I love science! I can't express it enough. I love science. I love it so much. I wish science was a lady so I could do nasty things to her. Man, that would be so crazy dope. For anyone to say they don't like science, it's like saying, oh, I'm stupid. If you don't like science, you're stupid. Because you do. Science affects everything. Medicine, technology, space and deep sea exploration, travel, entertainment. Science affects everything. We live in a time blessed by the advances of those that came before us who just thought things into existence and by trial and error and experimenting and sacrifice, we have improved the lives of the suffering. We have cured diseases. You think brain surgery is new? You think that's a modern day discovery? Homie, they have been performing brain surgery for 20,000 years. I remember being in a museum and walking past this display of these two cavemen holding down another caveman while a third caveman cut his head open. Cavemen were knocking other cavemen inside the head. Ugh! Slumped! And drilling holes in their head while they were unconscious to treat battle injuries or to release evil spirits. That was brain surgery! That left a lasting impression on me. It fascinated me. Dude! Dude! Can you imagine that? And believe it or not, a decent percentage, not quite half, went on to survive that procedure. Now, what condition of life they enjoyed, I don't know, but they lived. Have you seen what brain surgery is today? The person is conscious throughout the entire procedure. They're just poking and prodding this person's brain, and they're responding to questions. The surgeon is asking them, it's a trick, man, it's nuts! Fun fact, the brain doesn't feel pain. I know, it's cool, right? And technology, dude! Science got this thing all over technology. Everything from what to make a more efficient microchip out of, to what is the most advanced fuel, to what wrapper to bring back via hologram next. That microchip is in your phone and it's in a supercomputer that runs entire aspects of your country. That fuel is in your car and in the rockets that sent us to the moon and further. And come on! Come on, man! Bring back Biggie. That will be fly as fuck. Speaking of travel, science could, possibly in our lifetimes, create more expedient forms of space travel. Faster spacecrafts or wormholes. Man, can you imagine settlements on the moon? Cities on the moon? Travel being that convenient? Or even other planets, other solar systems, other galaxies? Can you imagine? Hey fella, I'm in the mood for some glippity zippity. So I'ma pop over to homie Spock crib in Andromeda. I'll be back. Damn, that was some good glippity. Spock said, what's up? Oh, oh, oh! and you can't like comics without science. If you like comics and you don't like science, you're an idiot. Half of what a comic is, is science. How did half these heroes become bosses in the first place? Oh, oh, I don't know. Let's ask that dude that was bitten by the radioactive spider. Or that dude that was bombarded by gamma rays from a bomb detonation. Or those dudes that were born with mutant genetics. Hey, a lot of the people in comics just do science. That is or is one of their superpowers. Science is a superpower. Doctor Doom, Iron Man, Galactus, Mr. Fantastic, Doc Ock, Lex Luthor, Batman, Mr. Sinister, Professor X, Brainiac, Apocalypse. Homie, the list goes on and on. Science is a superpower. Hell, look at the shirt I'm wearing right now. It's the turtles, mutant turtles, and beneath them, it's Shredder, or for you true blue fans out there, Orokusaki. And his cronies, Bebop and Rocksteady, how do you think these motherfuckers came into existence? Shredder was a scientist. Bebop and Rocksteady was just some gangsters that the turtles whipped up on, and Shredder took them in and was like, Who would like the power to exact revenge on those accursed turtles? And two dudes jumped up and was like, Yeah, I'll do it! And Shredder strapped them to some chairs and hit them with some laser beams, and they was like, Aah! Turtles! Man, I love the turtles. I used to have a crush on April. She was fly. Sometimes I just like to sit and think about science. If something piques my interest, then I'll research it. And I'll spend the rest of the afternoon just having the time of my life reading about nerdy crap. It's what I like to do. I remember thinking in a very hippie, but also very scientifically benevolent kind of way, what kind of potentially more efficient engine type or fuel could there be? And I just thought about this. Anyone can think about these things. Anyone can think about these things. Then I thought, well, magnesium is produced in abundant enough quantities. It's the eighth most abundant element on Earth. It's highly combustible. Water actually makes it burn. Why not use this as a fuel? I researched it some more, and it turns out I know very little about the science that goes behind an idea like this, but it was fun learning about it. It's actually incredibly expensive to do things this way, but someone found a way around that. It turns out this idea was already discovered, experimented with, and implemented. 
But I didn't know that. It was just cool to think about it. It involves a laser beam made of harnessed solar rays. It's dope, man. Check the description. Look, my point is, I learned something new from something I imagined, from something I already knew. Albert Einstein said, Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited to what we now know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there will ever be to know. And understand. I want you to strive to know everything you can in this world. Devour information insatiably as if you had a physical need for it. Like you have a physical need to drink and to eat and to sleep and to breathe. Wake up to it. Go to sleep to it. Learn every single day. And then just think. Use your imagination to just think of new things. The mistake that so many people make is that science and all of its discoveries are to be left to some old, balding, bearded, brainiac, beaming at beakers. Alliteration. But no! Science is for everyone! Everyone! Everyone, damn it! Anyone can learn something that interests them and then imagine new aspects or advancements in that thing. Learn what interests you. I've talked to people. Ask them what their interests were. Do you know how many people tell me? Oh, I don't know. I don't have any interests. What the fuck? No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 You're so stupid. You don't have any hobbies? Anything you enjoy that helps you grow as a person? What are you doing? Just sitting around watching TV and playing on the internet all day? You are wasting your life. I'll tell you right now, I don't watch TV. I haven't owned a TV for almost two years. I'll stream my news and I do have a couple of shows that I like. Game of Thrones is my shit. And The Walking Dead? Seriously, dude? Come on, let's just be real. But I don't do the TV on and in the background all day long kind of thing. That drives me crazy. Turn it off. I read a lot of articles online. I'm always reading, always reading. I want to know as much as I can. I want to be a part of some big discovery one day. If I ever had money, that's what I would do. If I ever come into a lot of money, I would science it up. You know what? I totally understand that some things require money to enjoy science. Some elements and equipment can be really expensive, but some stuff is really cheap. Gallium, the metal that melts at 85 degrees, if you hold a piece of it in your hand, it will turn to liquid. That stuff is like 30 bucks for 10 grams on Amazon. You can buy most any metal online, or any mineral, or any chemical, or any plant. You can get anything online. You jerk offs do realize you have the knowledge of an entire world at your fingertips. What are you looking up on the internet? Besides, oh, what's going on with the gazillion's butt? Who gives a shit? Do you know that just a few hundred years ago, if you wanted to learn anything, you would have to go to someone who already knew that thing? Libraries weren't abundant back then. You would have to go to the source. Now you can do it from your phone. You have the whole world in your hands. That didn't sound blasphemous at all. I don't do iPhones. I don't have Siri. But if I did, I'd ask her, Siri, how do you build a dirty bomb? And she'd be all, Bleep. Let's get it, my G. Praise be to Allah, or something like that. The point is, she would supply the information. You can learn how to build a bomb. Don't learn how to build a bomb. I'm just saying that's what you could do. The information's there. And hey, loving science makes you a better parent, too. Kids really can ask dozens upon dozens upon dozens of questions every single day. And you being a big brain-having parent will benefit them better than if you just repeated the dumb shit your parents told you. Daddy, what's this bump on my tongue? It's a lie bump. What you been telling lies for? No! Do it again! Daddy, what's this bump on my tongue? Hmm? Uh, uh, well, son, it's called transient lingual papillitis, and while there's no definitive cause for it, it's believed to be caused by stress, trauma, or acidic food. Oh! Ha! <laughs> cool! C is totally better. Let's try another one. Daddy, how does the microwave work? Jesus! No! Do it again! Daddy, how does the microwave work? Well, microwaves use electromagnetic radiation set to a certain frequency to stimulate water molecules in food. Any molecule going at a faster rate is going to create heat, which is why your food gets hot. What is electromagnetic radiation? Electromagnetic radiation is a form of radiant energy, just like visible light, radio waves, and x-rays. Oh! Cool! And man, with the rush of better and better technologies, entertainment is constantly evolving and creating new experiences. It won't be long now before you look at the Xbox One and you're like, man, I wouldn't wipe my ass with that. 
That's a piece of shit. You can't clean shit away with shit. That's not how shit works. There is going to be gaming technology. It's just going to be a console that you load game directly onto a set of gloves and a headset that interprets brainwaves into commands that work you through a game that you see via hologram projected around you. It would be really dope if they incorporated some lightweight omnidirectional treadmill into this, but hey, what are you going to do? Anyway, that's absolutely doable now. Microsoft has something called a HoloLens. That is basically that. It is a hologram technology. So, Microsoft. Make it happen! So many discoveries are being made so fast, so much is going on in science all the time! Come on! The world we live in today has come so far from the world our parents were born into. And we've advanced so much farther than the world our grandparents were born into. And oh my god! We're like rocket people compared to our great-grandparents. I mean, we're almost literally, I mean, t I guess technically we are rocket people compared to them. Some of you guys don't even know your ass from an iPod. Unless you come from a family of whores and your great-grandmother's like 50. If more than one generation of your family was started between the ages of 17 and 19, then you come from a family of whores. And that's just where we are now. Can you imagine where we'll be in another three generations? Can you imagine where we'll be if more people took an interest in this? Look, there are just too many... You gotta, I gotta, you guys gotta, you, you gotta know science, man, it's science! Have you ever heard, oh, how these diamonds catch the light? Well, there's some truth to that. In the prism of a diamond, light slows down just the tiniest fraction of a second. It enters in, ping, 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 and then exits. So for those small, almost negligible moments, it is very, 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 very faintly brighter. Well, in 1998, Danish physicist Len Vestergaard Ho and her team successfully slowed a beam of light to 17 meters a second. And then later in 2004, they completely stopped it altogether. They stopped light. If that sentence alone doesn't blow your mind, there's something wrong with you. There is. There is something wrong with you. The applications are endless, and the better we perfect this technology, the more powerful and world-changing it can be. Think of being able to illuminate a space without using any energy or creating any waste. Or hey, if you can slow it down, stop it, contain it, why can't we change it? We do it all the time. Can you imagine solidified light? Link in the description for this and everything I've been talking about. Hell, with the advancements in biochemistry, genetics, surgeries, medicine, there is no reason in the near future we can't see. Super people! You already have guys that can bench press a half ton. What if some hippie scientist makes this completely natural steroid supplement in his greenhouse that can make you Captain America or something? I don't know. I am going to have to make several more videos just for this stuff alone. Okay, guys, I gotta wrap this up. I love science, and I hope I got you a little bit interested in it, too. It can be anyone's hobby, and uchi wali wali, good golly, Miss Molly, is there ever going to be cool stuff in the description? Get with that real stuff to get gone! See you guys later. Science boom! You guys! Chicken science! Get the description!